Okay, previously we already uh, finished chapter 5, which is Bernoulli's equation and continuity equation. Now we move to chapter 6. In this chapter, you will apply the same concept, okay, as what you learned in, in the chapter 5, and it will apply uh, in the chapter 6. Chapter 6 is much, uh, it's more to applications of the Bernoulli equation. And you will apply to this flow meters uh, instrument, okay? There are three types of flow meters that you will learn in this chapter. First is orifice, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, orifice meter. Uh, venturi, okay? First is venturi, second is orifice, and third is pitot tube. So these three types of uh, flow meters have different uh, kinds of uh, calculation or derivations from the Bernoulli's equation that you must do in order for you to calculate uh, the velocity uh, or uh, discharge, okay? But uh, the, all of these will apply the same concept or the same principle as what you learn in the chapter 5, which is Bernoulli's principle, okay? So the objective of this chapter is to acquire fundamental concept of flow meters and then at the end of this chapter, basically for the chapter 6, students should be able, one, describe the apparatus, principle and applications of venturi meter, either it is horizontal, inclined or vertical. So what is the difference and how you will uh, derive the equation from these three types of, uh, from these uh, three uh, different uh, location or the inclination or uh, the arrangement of this uh, venturi meter and then second is orifice meter and then last is a pitot tube okay we have two different types of pitot first is pitot tube is a very simple pitot tube and then we have another one is a pitot static tube okay pitot tube uh, okay you will learn about the pitot tube after this okay number two sketch and label the flow meter based on the information given from the equation you can actually uh, draw a suitable diagrams or your you can actually draw a diagram of uh, venturi meter orifice meter or pitot tube okay with the information or based on the information given from the question Third, apply the concept in chapter one to chapter five again and chapter six is much more to application you have to memorize back and you have to revise back chapter 1 up to chapter 6 chapter 5 and you will apply in the chapter chapter 6 okay in order for you to solve engineering problems related to venturi meter orifice meter and pitot tube so in chapter 1 you learn about the fluid properties okay chapter 2 you learn about the static pressure where you have to calculate what is the pressure when there is no motion or uh, the fluid is at rest okay and you will uh, change uh, the pressure in terms of heat, okay? Pressure and heat. That's why chapter 2 called as a pressure and heat. And then chapter 3, you learn about the uh, Reynolds number, okay? The types of flow. And chapter 4, you learn about the... Uh, but maybe in this applica application for the chapter 6, you will not apply chapter 4 in this... Uh, to solve the engineering problems. Because chapter 4 is much more to the deep to the dimensional analysis so basically dimensional analysis will not uh, apply for the applications of this chapter lah okay chapter 6 you will not apply the chapter 4 in this chapter okay what you have to know that chapter 1 chapter 2 chapter 3 and chapter 5 will be applied okay in this chapter because this chapter is much more to application okay Next is derive an appropriate equation as required from the Bernoulli's equation actually. You will derive an equation up to what is the objective of the question. Okay, for example, the question wants you to find what is the velocity. Or maybe the question asks you about the chapter 2, elevations or um, uh, the, the, the height of the manometer. So you have to apply the concept too. Uh, the, concept from chapter 2 into the chapter 6 okay that's why chapter 6 is much more to application and you have to memorize all the chapters or previous chapters that 
you've learned okay and make sure you understand more on chapter one two uh, three and five because if you have some if you have problems in understanding those chapters you will have a serious problems in order for you to solve this chapter uh, question okay chapter six next explain the difference between venturi meter and orifice meter so we have uh, three different types of flow uh, three different types of flow meter uh, but now this uh, at, uh this objective specifically mentioned about the venturi and orifice meter why because uh, you will know about this after this okay what is the difference between venturi and orifice okay and last is discuss determine and apply static stagnation dynamic and total pressure this is more on uh pitot tube because in pitot tube we have static uh pressure we have stagnation pressure and the last one is a dynamic pressure and after that you will uh, calculate the total pressure so basically all of this based on chapter five okay and sometimes you will require chapter two in order for you to solve the chapter five okay now uh, that is learning outcome let's take a look at the venturi meter venturi meter consists of short converging conical tube okay leading edge with a uh, all right to leading edge to a cylindrical portion called a throat a smaller diameter that of a pipeline which is followed by a diverging section in which the diameter increases again to that of the main pipeline so this is the figure of venturi meter so as you can see in this venturi meter we do have a throat here here this is what we call as a throat this is converging section and then after that it will diverge diverging section where uh, that flu uh, that uh, flows will diverge up to this pipe diameter okay pipe uh, diameter and then it will converge converging to the throat diameter and then it will diverge once more or uh, diverge again and then goes up to the diameter of uh, the pipe so that is venturi meter venturi meter will uh, specifically follow the uh, diameter of uh, specifically follow this kinds of shape okay you may see these kinds of arrangement in the lab okay uh, or maybe you can uh, try to google it uh, and try to find what is venturi so normally venturi will look like this okay now the pressure difference from which the volume rate of flow can be determined is measured by the entry section one and throat section two often by means of YouTube manometers okay the pressure difference here okay in the uh, in in but before that as you can see here there is some inclination for this uh, venturi meter actually you may arrange this uh, venturi meter in horizontal okay it, it is up to you maybe you want to uh, draw it or you want to uh, arrange it in your pipe in inclination so it is depends on you now what does it means by this point number two is the pressure difference between the point section one and section two the section one is always converging section so as we as you can see here it will flows here and that it will converge to the throat and the throat will be number two do not seem do not put your section one from the throat to diverging cone okay because the flows the flows of fluid is from the converging section to the throat and then to okay when you want when you are required to draw uh venturi meter for other questions so you must remember that the flows is up <clears throat> the flows of the venturi meter comes from the converging section to the diverging section converging to the throat and then throat to the diverging cone okay diverging section 
Now, in order for you to determine what is the price difference between these two points, you have to put another instrument. For example, as you can see here, this instrument you've learned from chapter 2. Okay? Either they put a differential uh, measurement, measure uh, differential instrument that could uh, uh, measure these two uh, difference, pressure difference. Maybe you have some other instrument here, or if you don't want to put here in the question, they might give you uh, already about this uh, differential pressure. But sometimes they will give you this kinds of figure. So this figure is comes from chapter 2. So in order for you to solve what is the pressure difference between point section 1 and section 2, you have to solve it by using a chapter 2 concept. Okay, you must remember that this is a combination. When you have manometer here, so you have to remember and try to memorize back and revise back chapter 2 where you have to find actually sometimes you have to find what is the pressure difference between these two points. Sometimes the combination is to find what is the heat of this uh, heat of the uh, manometric fluid in this uh, manometer. So it depends on the question. It is it is up to you either you understand about the chapter two or not. If you have some problems with the chapter two, please come in. Uh, please WhatsApp me. Okay. Now, the pressure difference will be uh, tapped by using manometer, okay? And then the axis of the meter may be inclined at any angle. It may be inclined, it will, it can be horizontal. It depends on that arrangement, okay? In these problems, we are doing an inclined venturi meter. Assuming that there is no loss of energy and applying Bernoulli's equation, now, chapter 6, as I mentioned before, we do have a friction friction uh, in the pipes and friction in this uh, venturi meter. But now, for now, we are assuming that there is no friction. So, frictionless. Therefore, there will be no friction in our Bernoulli's equation. So, we will use the general Bernoulli's equation here. This is general Bernoulli's equation. So, this is a summation of energy at point 1 and summation of energy at point 2. So, section 1 and section 2, whatever energy, pressure, kinetic, and potential energy that comes from the section 1, it will turn and it will change to section 2. So, that is the conservation of energy. Energy cannot be created nor be destroyed. It can be only, it can only change the form. Eh? So, maybe the pressure change into the kinetic energy or maybe pressure change to the potential energy. But the summations of pressure energy, kinetic energy, and potential energy is equal for both points, okay? Now, we are not uh, applying the friction, as I mentioned before. In chapter 8, you will have that kind of uh, equation, another extension to the Bernoulli's equation, where we will add HF. But for now, you will not add HF because you will assume that there is no friction in the part or in the venturi or uh, uh, in the pipe or in a victory. Okay, so now what we are going to do here is to find what is the velocity at point 1. Or maybe you can find, okay, you have to find what is the velocity at point with, uh, yeah, they are asking about the velocity at point 1. So velocity at point 1, you may calculate the velocity at point 2 because the velocity at point 2, this is section 2. So velocity at point 2 is, a, is uh, the uh, velocity at the throat. Okay, now we want to find what is the velocity in the pipe because the section 1 is uh, normally before the converging cone. Okay, now uh, we are applying the Bernoulli's equation between point 1, here is point 1, and this is point 2 change the color to make it uh to make you see that there will be point okay that there, there is a point here one and two so we have two different points okay one and two now what we have to do is we have to check on this uh Bernoulli's equation 
Okay, what about P1? We do have P1 and P2 because that is a pressure difference between the section 1 and section 2. As we can see here, in the manometer, there, there, is, a, there is the uh, movements of this uh, movements of this gauge liquid, eh? manometric fluid. Okay, there is a uh, increase in the H. Okay, therefore, there is uh, the difference, uh, there is difference in a uh, difference in the pressure for the point number one and point number two. Normally, we are not uh, zeroing those points unless both of the, that points is exposed to ambient or exposed to surrounding where the surrounding is P atmospheric. Now it is not exposed to surrounding because it is in the pipe and in the pipe there is a pressure, okay? Therefore, we are not zeroing uh, the values of P1 and P2, okay? We maintain and we let it be in the, quest, in the equation. Now we take a look at the second terms here, the kinetic energy U1 squared over 2G and U2 squared over 2G. So as we can see here, the previous video I've already mentioned that if the velocity, if the, uh, the diameter of the pipes is the same, okay, diameter at section one and diameter at section two is the same, are, are, are the same. What will happen to the velocity is it can be cancelled out because u two and u one will have the same, will have the same velocity, so it will cancel out uh, by each other, okay. But now. There is a difference in diameter here. Diameter 1 and diameter 2 is totally different. Therefore, you cannot cancel out the U term. So, it will be in our quest, uh, equation. So, U1 square and U2 square will be in this equation. Eh? What about Z? So, Z1 and Z2. Or maybe there will be some uh, inclination. Uh, there will be some uh, difference in the Z values. So, can we zero in the Z values? Take a look at this figure. So the Z, now they are taking the datums of these uh, figures is in here. So this is the datum. So it will be, it will still, it will still be the same if you take your Z here. Maybe you want to change it. I think Z1 is here. And what about Z2? Z2 is above Z1. What about maybe Z2? Uh, maybe H or maybe uh, there will be a, a some different there will be a difference lah okay we have to calculate what is the H value here okay but for here as we can see uh, Z one minus Z two Z two minus Z one is uh, we do still have that. Uh, height lah, okay, we, we can calculate that height, okay So now the potential heat cannot be removed Z1 and Z2 because there is inclination and if there is inclination there will be uh, There will be an elevation between those two points lah, okay, so therefore we have no uh, terms That will be zero in our Bernoulli's equation then we proceed to rearrange the equation. We have to rearrange the equation. Our objective or our aim is here to find what is the velocity at point 1. Therefore, you have to rearrange left hand side will be a velocity terms and then the others will be on the right hand side. Okay? So therefore, your equation will become like this. Okay, for continuous flow, then we do believe that the pressure 1 will be given the values. We can find pressure 1, pressure 2 because this uh, pressure difference will be calculated based on the manometer. And then Z1, Z2 will be given. And G can be solved. Rho can, is given in the question. G will be given. But what about your velocity? We do not have, uh, we do not been supplied with uh, two velocity in our systems. Maybe they will give a, a volumetric flow rate, for example, or maybe they will give you velocity at uh, not 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 give you the velocity because that is our aims or our objective. Now, what we are gonna do because there is two unknown here. So what we are gonna do is we 
try to call out continuity equation to help us to remove or not remove to reduce the unknown from 2 to 1. So we have to apply the continuity equation. That's why this is continuity equation and what do we want? We want u1. Therefore, we have to change u2. So rearrange this continuity equation to get what is u2 equation. So u2 equation is a1 over a2 u1. So substitute this equation into this. So you will get a new equation. Okay, this is the equation. So from this equation, okay, because you already substitute and rearrange, okay? Substitute and rearrange the equation. So you will get u1 square, a1 over a2 square minus 1, 2g, p1 minus p2, rho g plus z1, z2. Okay? And then bring all these terms because you want to make u1 as your uh, subject, okay? You want what is the equation for u1? You want to find u1. Okay? Therefore, you rearrange the equation. Equation. Therefore, u1 is equal to this. So, please rearrange this equation and you will get this. So, how do these terms change into this? So, take a look at here. So, we do have a1 square over a2 square minus 1. Okay? I've already... Uh, change it. So, this is a2 square over a2 square. Okay, a1 square over a2 square minus a2 square over a2 square. If you can cancel out, you will get 1. Now, we want to, both of these have the same uh, denominator. Okay, a1 square minus a 2 square over a2 square okay because when you bring this here it will divide it will becomes a denominator here therefore if you want to change like this okay uh, with because there is a u1 square here you bring square into here you will get set so set a1 square minus a2 square set a2 square will be a2 only Okay, and over this one would be a1 square minus a2 square. Because here is divide, then you can uh, change it into a2 over, okay, 1 over a2. Oh, sorry, not a2. So 1 over a1 square minus a2 square divided by a2. So it will become a2 over set a1 square minus a2 square. So it will be the same like it. this. Lah. So here, this equation will be changed into m. m is area ratio. If you don't want to change into this, it's okay. Let it be like this. Okay? Then if you want to find what is the discharge rate, then you have to Multiply u1 with e1. Okay? If you don't want to change to this, it's okay. Let it be like this and try to find what is the values inside this. Okay? Try to fill up all those values. Now, if you can take a look at here, we have the pressure different term here. So we do have a pressure difference terms and the z1 minus z2 term here. So, how can we solve this? These pressure terms, you can find it by using manometer. Okay, since in this question, in this example, we are using manometer to find the, the, the pressure difference between these two points. Okay, therefore, in order for you to calculate the pressure difference, we, can, we need to revise back chapter 2 and then apply into the chapter 6. Okay. So, this is the manometer concept. Okay, how to find? So, here, before that, the, a coefficient of discharge CD is therefore introduced if you want to find what is the actual discharge from the venturi meter. 
okay whatever calculation you do here you will get the theoretical value because in theoretical you will get that kinds of value or that kinds of discharge rate or velocity or whatever value but in theory in actual you have to times it with the cd value in order for you to get what is the actual discharge for example discharge you calculate q u1 a1 is is for uh, theoretical then you want to calculate what is the actual value then you have to cut you have to multiply with cd value uh, your q theoretical with cd value then you will get the actual okay so now what we are gonna do here we have to find what is the this the uh, pressure difference here so we want to find what is the p1 minus p2 so how so we have to re we have to uh, refer or memorize back revise back the chapter chapter two now here is point one and point two okay can i erase this uh, okay i erase this first okay Now, we want to find what is the pressure difference P1 minus P2 because this arrangement is P1 minus P2. Eh? Based on your arrangement, if you uh, try to find what is U2 here, U2, then this arrangement will be different, maybe P2 minus P1. Therefore, you have to follow here P2 minus P1. Now, I re I, my arrangement to find U1 is P1 minus P2. Therefore, here would be, I have to rearrange P1 minus P2. So, now this point is 1 and this point is 2. So, like I said before, in chapter 2, we have to find liquid with the same level, with the same density. Even it, it is at interface. So, here is interface of the fluid between gauge liquid and the fluid inside this uh, Venturi. This fluid will be the same as the Venturi meters uh, fluid. Okay, here we will put it a line here. So I will have A and B. Okay, so now I have PA equal to PB. Same liquid, same density, same level. Okay, now I have to find what is PA. PA is, this is P1, this point is P1, and then you have to add with how many? So now, as you can see, that this has no value, okay? The same as this. So... No, we can we can use it. Uh, I'm sorry. Now we have we do have a, we we put a datum line here, so zero line. So this is datum line where from here to here is exact one. <clears throat> Therefore, in order for you to find. Uh, what is the uh, uh, what is the uh, length or height of uh, this height of this so you have to z1 minus h minus z am I right so pa is p1 so we do have p1 plus rho g h okay rho Rho is rho fluid here up till here, so we have to calculate what is the rho. Rho is rho of the fluid, lah. Okay, rho fluid g. What about h? h is z1 
minus z minus h. So you will get what is d or oh, not, not minus h because h is here. So z1 minus z only. Okay. Now we have pb. Sorry, I think I wrote it down here. So pa okay equal to p1 plus rho fluid because rho is rho fluid in the uh, virtual meter. So times with g and then z1 minus z. Okay, that is your first pa lah. And then pb, what about pb? So pb is p2 plus rho fluid, right? Fluid and then g sec 2 minus okay, this is sec 2 minus h minus sec h minus sec so that is point of number 1 we do have gauge liquid density so plus rho gauge g so this is h so rho g h Okay, now PA is equal to PP. You have to equate both of these equations. Okay, PA and PP is the same. Okay, so you will get what? P1, sorry, plus rho fluid G, Z1 minus Z equal to P2 plus rho fluid G Z2 minus H minus sorry Z plus rho G G H so cancel out this rho G Z and rho G H rho G Z here you can cancel out with this rho G Z okay so rearrange this equation. So get is uh, p1 minus p2. So rearrange into p1 minus p2. So p1 minus p2 equal to. So bring it here. P2 will be here. So your equation will become rho f rho. Uh, rho f g z 2 minus rho f g z 1 plus rho g g h okay this is your equation now you can write it z 2 minus z 1 plus rho g g h so you may divide no, it's okay so from here, this is P1 minus P2, you get this equation. So you have to substitute this equation into this equation. Okay. And after substitution, you will get the equation will become like this. Okay. When you substitute P1 minus P2 here, this is your equation. And substitute into here and you will cancel out a few of this uh, a few of the terms inside because we do have z2 minus z1 so this is positive value but now here z2 is negative value so rho g z2 minus z1 rho g will be cancelled out with rho g okay and then please try substitute into this equation this equation, P1 minus P2, right? P1 minus P2, you have derived it to be like this. And then substitute this equation into P1 minus P2 equation here. Okay? And then cancel out the terms. You will get this equation. Okay, this one. At the end, you will get this equation where rho manometric, rho man manometric over a row okay row manometric here is row gauge lah. okay gauge 
liquid density here inside this manometer. Okay, fluid in the manometer. Okay, that is how you do the virtuometer, how you derive the equation in order for you to determine what is the velocity. Now, that is velocity, okay? To find what, uh, when you substitute into this, you will get the equation for the velocity. So, in order for you to find what is the discharge, you have to multiply U1 with A, A1. Therefore, you will get Q, discharge rate. Okay, now... Uh, that is, uh, by using this equation, okay, this equation, you will get theoretical value of the discharge. To get the actual value, you must have to multiply that Q value with CV, okay? That is for the Venturi meter. And when you do some calculation or you do question in uh, final pass here, about the venturi meter, I believe that you will understand uh, more on how to uh, how to derive the equation for the venturi meter. So please make sure that you know how to derive the venturi meter. Normally, um, okay, this is the venturi meter example. So let's take a look at the example because previously we already learned about how to derive the venturi meter then we go to the question this is example a venturi meter equipped with a differential pressure cage so we do have venturi meter this is venturi and then equipped with differential pressure gauge okay through a uh, it's used to measure a flow rate of water at 15 degrees celsius given the density through a five centimeter horizontal pipe the diameter of the venturi neck is 3 cm. So this is the throat of the venturi, okay, with the diameter of 3 cm. And the measured pressure drop is 5 kPa, taking the discharge coefficient to be 0 0.96. CD has already been given in your question. Therefore, you have to determine the volume flow rate of water. So in this example, we have to determine the volume flow rate of the water. Now, the trick is here. The trick here is taking a discharge coefficient. And after this statement, this question asks us to find volume flow rate. Therefore, this volume flow rate represents actual value, uh, actual volume flow rate. Okay? And the average velocity through the pipe. Please do not uh, calculate the average velocity. Section 1, Section 2, Velocity 1, Velocity 2 by, uh, plus, and divide by 2. That is not the average velocity. We do know that the velocity in the pipe is in parabolic in, uh, motion, in parabolic manners. Therefore, if we combine all this velocity in the parabolic of each layers, then we get that average velocity. In other words, you have to find what is the velocity at point 1 and what is the velocity at point 2. That is average velocity. And you have to calculate average velocity at every point. Okay. Now, uh, to, to answer this question, you have to start with Bernoulli's equation. Okay. P1 over rho g plus u1 square over 2g plus Z1 equal to P2 over rho G plus U1 square over 2G plus Z2. Okay, that is the, the Bernoulli's equation. Now we need to cancel out whichever terms that can be cancelled or that can be zero. So P1 and P2, we cannot cancel it because since this is the... Uh, venturi meter and it is not exposed to the ambient which means that the flow is not open to the ambient open to the atmosphere therefore the p1 and p2 cannot be zero then the second one is u1 and u2 in this question there will be a difference in the diameters 0.1 and 0.2 therefore we cannot well, i'm really sorry because I, u1 and u2 cannot be zero cannot be cancelled each other unless both of these sections have the same diameters 
Okay. What about Zach? Now Zach we can cancel out because we take the points here is point number one in the middle of this uh, section one and point number two is in the middle of the section two at the throat. Therefore, the Z is, is the same for, for point number one and point number two. So we can cancel out Z1 and Z2. So your equation will become P1 over rho g plus P1 square over 2g equal to P2 over rho g plus P2 square over 2g. Now, take a look at here. We do have, uh, we, we have been given with the pressure drop value here. Okay, and the measured pressure drop is 5 kPa. So the arrangement or the, the here is pressure drop means that P1 minus P2 equal to 5 kPa. If you want to rearrange into P2 minus P1, you have to put negative 5 kPa because this value represents the pressure drop. So if you do P2 minus P1, P2 is not greater than P1, so therefore you should have negative value because P1 is always greater than P2. Since the velocity here is higher, then the pressure is lower. So velocity here is lower than pressure is higher. So either P1 and P2, P1 has great, greater, uh, has, has higher pressure compared to pressure number, uh, point number two. So, so we have to rearrange this equation into P1 minus P2 to make it easier for us lah, okay? So P1 minus P2 over rho g equal to u2 square over 2g minus u1 square. Uh, so bring this rho g into this and we can cancel out this lah. Okay, P1 minus P2 equal to rho u Sorry, it is not mean easy. So bring you two two G to here. So you will have two P one minus P two over rho equal to U two square minus U one square. Oh, we have two unknown. Do we have value for U uh, one and U two? No, only diameter given in this question without given any of the volumetric flow rate. Therefore, what we have to do is we have to call up the continuity equation to help us to reduce these two unknown up to one, uh, down to reduce these two unknown to one unknown only. So now, continuity equation. Okay, we do know that u1 a1 equal to u2 a2. So now we want to find either one, either you want to find velocity at point one or point two. So I will find velocity at point one first. So in this equation, I have to remove u2. So u2 equal to u1 a1 over a2. So substitute this. So I put it 2 and this is 1. Put 2 into 1. Okay. So 2 P1 minus P2 over rho equal to U1 A1 over A2. So because square, so you have to square minus U1 square. So therefore, you will get u1 square, a1 square over a2, square minus 1. So I factorize this equal to 2, p1 minus p2 over rho. Okay? So bring this into here. So then here. And you will get... Uh, the equation for u2 lah. Okay. So from here, from that equation, uh, substitute all the values and then you will get what is the value of u1. Okay. 
And then in order for you to find what is the Q values, so now I will bring you this up to here. So your U1 is equal to, so 2, P1 minus P2, okay, over rho. So that is number 1, am I right? So divide by A1 square over A2 square minus 1. So you can uh, let your equation be like this, okay? And set all of this. Because you do have U1 square. Therefore, U1 is equal to set. 2p1 minus p2 over rho over a1 square over a2 square minus 1. So substitute all the values. Okay, in this equation, please calculate. Substitute and then you will get what is the value of u1. Okay, this value is average velocity at point 1. So in order for you to calculate what is the average velocity at point 2, then you have to use continuity equation. But Wait, now the average velocity question is comes after actual velocity, actual volume flow rate. Therefore, this is actual average velocity. Then you have to calculate what is the volumetric flow rate first and then after that, uh, you have to calculate U1 or U2. So now we have to determine the volume flow rate of water. So... After you get the volume flow rate, so I use this question. So after you get the velocity from that equation, what you have to do is you have to substitute into Q equal to U1, A1. Okay? Now you already have U1 equation. So in order for you to find what is the discharge, you have to multiply with A1. So now your equation is, uh, you just times with A1 and then third to P1 minus P2 over rho. That is the first number one. And then divide by Okay, a1 square over a2 square minus 1. Okay, so this is your equation to find theoretical discharge. So to find the actual, so this is theoretical, eh? theoretical. To find the actual discharge, what you have to do, you have to multiply with CD. Okay, so you already have theoretical, so I put it as Q actual, this is Q actual equal to CD times with Q theoretical. So this Q theoretical is comes from this equation and then CD is comes from this uh, value 0.98. And then after that, use that Q actual to find average velocity. Substitute from this equation. Eh? Q actual equal to U1, A1. Q actual equal to U2, A2. Substitute into this equation and then find what is the value of U2. Okay. So if you have any problems with this, you may uh, find me lah. Okay. Through WhatsApp man. Eh? To make you, uh, if you have any misunderstanding or you do not, uh, you miss some of the concept of uh, fluid mechanics, okay, you may ask me through WhatsApp. So this Q actual, okay, and then uh, you have to make sure eh, P1 minus P2. If you want to put P2 minus P1, you have to substitute this 5 kPa into negative 5 kPa here. Okay, uh, please uh, make sure that all the units substitute into this equation is in SI unit. So if you do have 5 kPa, then 
change it into 5000 PA. If you do not change into 5000 PA, then you will get the wrong values, okay, for your uh, theoretical volumetric flow rate. Okay, so this example two, I think you will, uh, you can uh, solve this, okay. And uh, this equation, uh, this question asks us to draw. Okay, I, I will uh, draw this figure first. A venturi meter having a throat diameter d2 of 100 mm is fitted into a pipeline. Okay, with venturi meter, so we draw venturi meter. Okay, like that. Okay. So the throat diameter D2 is 100 mm. So this is 100 mm. And then uh, 250 mm is for diameter 1. Okay. So the pressure difference between the entry and the throat tapping is measured by YouTube manometer containing mercury. If the difference level of indicated by the mercury in the YouTube is 0 0.63 meter. Calculate the theoretical volume flow rate. So you have to uh, calculate the theoretical volume flow rate, but you have to, before that, you have to draw the YouTube manometer. So if you draw a YouTube manometer here, you have to know what is the elevation, what is the uh, difference level. Either because we know that if we attach venturi meter, we have these kinds of uh, level, okay? Which of this figure true for your questions? Uh, so this eleva elevation. Is it A or B? Okay, A or B, which one is true? The elevation. And you have to uh, remember what I've said before. Velocity at here is slow, but the pressure is high. And here velocity is high, pressure is slow. So with these figures, which of these figure is the correct figure to represent this elevation, the difference in this, in the YouTube manometer. So of course A. Okay, because here we do have high pressure that push the manometric liquid down and then at this point there is a loss of pressure, uh, lower pressure, therefore this liquid will increase or goes up and that elevation is to be like this. Okay. Then substitute into this lah. Okay, you draw same as this. Okay. So what about the orifice meter? The venturi described operates by changing the cross section. So we do. Uh, we we can see that the venturi meter operates by uh, changing the cross-section okay, of the flow so that the cross-section area is less at the downstream pressure tapping than the upstream pressure tapping. So the similar effect, we do not talking about the fa uh, the, 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 uh, the fabrication, uh, the shape of that uh, flow meter, we are talking about the effects, okay. Effects that will be experienced by the orifice meter will be the same as orifice meter. The way how the, the flows, uh, the, the shape. Because we when we have orifice meter, the flow will be like this. Okay? This shape of the flow effect is the same as venturi meter. Okay? We do have the throat. Uh, this uh, smaller uh, we we do have this uh, side and we do have uh, converging and diverging section 
okay the effects we are not talking about the shape the shape uh, for the venturi meter it will follow the shape of that uh, cross section lah okay like this but for the venturi meter uh, for the orifice meter in a pipe oh wow. in a pipe there will be this is pipe okay and we do have this venturi uh, orifice Okay, and the effect of the water will be the same as venturi meter. Okay, the effect. It will not talking about the shape, but the effect. Therefore, the derivations of the orifice meter will be the same as venturi meter. Okay, mm, this one. So we do have some uh, orifice here. We do have orifice here. Then the flow inside the pipe will be exactly the same effect okay we can uh, the effect experience in this orifice meter will be the same as what uh, in the venturi meter okay so we take a look at this uh, example the flow rate of water 20 degrees celsius uh, that is all the properties through a 50 centimeter pipe is measured with orifice meter with the 30 centimeter diameter opening to 200 to be 250 liters per second that means the pressure difference indicated by the orifice meter given the CD is 0 0.61 so now we have pipe and then orifice so we do tap we tap pressure here so this is water this is pressure of one, uh, point 0.1 and point 0.2 so that means the pressure difference, P1 minus P2. No, no. You will not use the... Uh, manometer but in this question ask us about what is the pressure difference between p1 and p2 so you will have to rearrange your equation into p1 minus p2 or p2 minus p1 either one p2 minus p1 either one it will be the same pressure difference both of it will be pressure difference so now we have to apply the Bernoulli's equation okay again p1 over rho g plus u1 square over 2g plus z1 equal to p2 over rho g plus u2 square over 2g plus z2 okay so since this is horizontal therefore there will be no z here what about u yes we do have u velocity of u and then what about p pressure that is what we need to do so i rearrange this equation into p1 minus p p2 over rho g equal to u2 square minus u1 square over 2g now uh, we do have these kinds of arrangement so rearrange this equation more so rho over 2 so u2 square minus u1 square okay we do have this kinds of arrangement or the equation. Then what, what you need to do is you have to you have to uh, substitute all the values inside. So now what we have is 250 liters per second for the orifice meter at 30 centimeters. So here is 30 centimeter and then here is uh, 50 centimeter so what you have to do is you have to calculate what is the area 1 and area 2 so find area 1 
and then find array 2 okay and after that use equation q1 equal to a1 u1 okay q2 a2 u2 so substitute this so array 1 will you will use a1 equation is by d squared over 4 okay area 2 by d squared over 4 also so depends on the diameter lah eh? now if you want to find what is the area 1 so you have to use d1 so if you want to use area uh, to calculate array 2 then you have to use d2 okay so rearrange the equation to find what is the velocity 1 and velocity 2 sorry so u1 is equal to q1 over a1 so u2 is q2 over a2 so substitute into this equation okay you will get what is the pressure difference indicated by the orifice meter okay but now uh, please again please please and please change all the units into SI units so now we have 250 liters per minute so your Q is 250 liters per second sorry I uh, say that liter per minute, right? So liter per second. So you have to change liter to meter cube. So times one thousand liters is equivalent to one meter cubic. And find what is the uh, Q value for your below your discharge. Eh? So this will be meter cube per second, the unit. Okay. That is orifice meter. So the example and the way how you derive is the same as venturi meter. Remember, same as venturi meter. Okay. So what is the difference between the orifice meter and the venturi meter? About the shape. And then one more thing is the pressure difference. If we use the venturi meter, that pressure drop will be gradual. And if you are using the orifice meter, that pressure drop is sudden. From high temperature, uh, from high pressure, sudden goes to uh, low pressure. If you have venturi meter, it will uh, gradually decrease that pressure, and it will not. Uh, occurs uh, or experience a sudden decrease in pressure okay so that is the difference in terms of the cost venturi meter is costly much more cost uh, much more uh, not economic not com economical or more costly than orifice meter okay so we go to the pitot tube so what is the difference between pitot tube this is pitot tube mounted on the wing of an aircraft normally we are uh, using pitot tube to calculate the velocity of the air lah. okay for, for this case is a velocity of the air so this is uh, therefore the pitot tube mount on the wing of the aircraft in order to uh, determine what is the velocity of the air at that moment okay when they fly through uh, the sky so the pitot tube is used to measure the velocity of a stream and consists of simple L-shaped tube facing into the oncoming flow. Very simple uh, application or uh, the configuration of this pitot tube because we do have only these kinds of configuration, l shape. Okay, if a stream of uniform Velocity flows into a blunt body. A streamline goes to the tip of the blunt body and stops. So what happens when there is a fluid here? So goes to the blunt body. So here, blunt, blunt body here. And uh, streamline goes to the tip of the blunt body and stops. Here, the fluid will stop. Okay.
So here, this the fluid will stop. So what will happen here? Uh, the velocity u is equal to zero meter per second because it stops. Okay, this is the point where we call it as a stagnation point. So remember, stagnation point. Okay, when the fluid is flows in a streamline and then face to the uh, uh, goes to the uh, blunt body and it will be it will stop, and that velocity uh, that fluid velocity will be zero meter per second. Okay, that is what we call as a stagnation point. So the pitot tube is used to measure the velocity of a stream and consists of a L-shaped tube facing into oncoming flow. So here, the oncoming flow is here. So this L-shape will be put into the streamline and this L, the tip of the L will face to the oncoming flows. Okay. If the velocity of the stream A is at U, a particle moving from A to the mouth of the tube B, it will be brought to rest at that, so that U2 at B is zero. So, in the beginning of the time, U A is not equal to zero. So when it approaching to this L tips, okay, and it will stop. So UB is zero. So this is point where we call it as a stagnation point. Okay. Okay. This is stagnation point. So here is a stagnation point. So if you calculate here, uh, if this uh, pitot tube put into the streamlines, so the point uh, in the front of this uh, L shape tip, this this tip is what we call as a stream uh, stagnation point where that fluid will brought to rest okay the fluid will fill up fill up this uh, l shape uh, this l shape and then up to the up to the point where the fluid in here is brought to rest so therefore that's why the velocity at point b is zero so if we want to calculate uh, the total energy at point E and point P. So we will use Bernoulli's equation. So Bernoulli's equation here is P1. Now Bernoulli's equation is P1 over rho G plus U1 square over 2G plus Z1 equal to P2 over rho G plus U2 square over 2G plus Z2. So now we do not have any z, z eh? point A and point B. We refer to this figure. Eh? So we do not have a z elevation eh? from point A and point B. So therefore we remove z1 and z2. What about P? So pressure at A and pressure at 2. Okay. So we want to find what is the PA and PB. Lah, eh? So P1 and P2. Yes, we do have these two values, okay? So what about u1 square and u2 square? So u2 square is ub. So we know that this point is stagnation point, therefore ub is equivalent to zero. So this ub, u2 is actually ub, stagnation point, and then velocity is zero meter per second. So substitute zero, so rearrange this equation. If you want to find what is P2, so this P2 is P0. Ni. So this is P0 and P. So I will put it as PB or PA. Lah, eh? So P0 over P, rho G equal to U squared over 2G plus P over rho G. Are you off? P1 over rho G plus u1 square over 2g equal to p2 over rho g. So, this is p1, this is p2. Okay? Now, uh, Now, P over rho G equal to Z. Okay. 
and p not over rho g is h plus z. Okay. So p two. So from here, so we know that p two is equal to you multiply all with rho g. So p one plus rho over two u one square. Am I right? Okay, this rho and rho over two. So now to get what is the value of PA or P1, my PA is my P1 eh? To get P1 is PATM plus this is PATM plus rho G. Rho G apa ni? What is this? Rho G Z. Okay tak? Okay. So to get what is P1, P ATM plus rho G Z. Now our calculation is uh, is based on gauge pressure. Therefore, P ATM is zero. So P1 is rho G Z. What about P2? So take a look here. P2 is, so now is P2, PB, H. So we do have here. So P ATM plus rho G H plus Z. Okay, P ATM plus rho G H plus Z. Okay, now we our calculation is only deals with gauge pressure. Therefore, P2 equal to rho G H plus Z. So substitute P2 and P1 into this equation. So you will get this equation. So therefore velocity at U, so U1, velocity at U1 is set to GH. Okay, so you substitute into this. P2 is rho G, H plus Z equal to P1 is rho GZ. Plus rho over 2 u1 square. Okay. So u1 is equal to set to gh. So when the pitot tip is used in a channel, the volume, the value of h can be determined directly. Okay. But if it is to be used in a pipe, and the difference between the static pressure and the pressure at the impact hole must be measured with differential pressure gauge using a static pressure tapping in the pipe hole. So if you want to calculate or if you want to measure the velocity of the flow of the fluid in the pipes, so you have to make some modification to this uh, pitot tube where we will have a uh, static pressure and the uh, pressure impact hole so your 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 pit up cube will be like this so there will be a static hole here to measure the static pressure and we do have the stagnation uh, pressure hole impact hole where we want to calculate uh, stagnation pressure here so this point will calculate the stat uh, static pressure and this point will calculate the uh, stagnation pressure so, so in this uh, figure, as we can see here, we do have stagnation point here. So this is what we call a stagnation point because you, velocity at here is zero. And then when the fluid is uh, fill up the uh, L shape, at one point it will stop and it will uh, give some pressure to this uh, liquid. So we will have a stagnation, a stagnation point. Okay. Uh, this is a stagnation pressure. Okay, stagnation point will have a stagnation pressure. So from here we have P plus rho u squared over 2 plus rho G Z. So P is a static pressure. Static pressure is the uh it represents the actual thermodynamic pressure of the fluid. Okay, the pressure of that fluid itself, okay, it will uh, show the static pressure, lah, okay. And then after that, we do have rho u squared over 
2. This is dynamic pressure and it represents the pressure rise when the fluid is in motion or uh, the fluid in motion is brought to stop. So what is that dynamic pressure? Okay, normally uh, to get dynamic pressure, we have to uh, minus the hydrostatic pressure with the uh, static pressure. Okay, and then the last one is rho g z hydrostatic pressure, which not pressure in a real sense, which it, since its value depends on the reference level selected. Okay, uh, depends on the value. Uh, reference must uh, it means that depends on the elevation itself lah. okay now uh, after all of that we can see that the P stagnation from here P stagnation is actually P plus rho u squared over 2 so this P is a static pressure static and then this is dynamic so to get what is stagnation pressure, we have to sum up the static pressure and dynamic pressure. So then you will get what is a P stagnation. So this is the pitot tube, okay, the figure of the pitot tube. You will see this kinds of configuration in the lab, okay. We are using the hydrodynamic tube where we have a static prop and this technician uh, this the same as this figure lah, the configuration for that uh, hydrostatic uh, prop okay uh, take a look at this example a piezometer and a pitot tube are tapped in horizontal water pipe as shown in figure to measure static and stagnation pressures for the indicated water column column height that means the velocity at the center of the pipe uh, of the pipe so we have to calculate what is the velocity at point one actually so we know that point two is a stagnation point therefore u2 is equivalent to zero so what you have to do is p1 over rho g plus u1 square over 2g plus z1 equal to p2 over rho g plus u2 square over 2g plus z2 so now this both of these point is the same, so there will be no elevation here. So now we have to calculate uh, what is the velocity. So velocity at point two is zero because it's stagnation point. Therefore, u two we can uh, it can be cancelled out. So, so rearrange u one square over two g equal to p two minus p one over rho g. Okay. Hmm. So now P2 minus P1, so U1 is equal to 2 P2 minus P1 over uh, rho, okay, set. So now we have to calculate what is P2 and P1. So P2 is P2 is 12 plus 7 plus 3. Am I right? 7, 10, 22 centimeter. So rho is rho water 1000. G is 9.81 times with how much? 22 times 10 to the power of 2 because centimeter so p2 is so 2158.2 pascal so now we have to find what is P1. P1 is H2 is 7 plus 3. So we will have 10. So 1000 times with 9.81 times with 10. Okay. So you will get P1 equivalent to 9.81.
981. Let's go. So substitute your value into this and you will get the value of u1. So 2158.2 minus 981. Okay, times with 2 divide by 1000. Set answer. So your U1 is 1.534 meter per second. So you already answered it is question. Okay. Okay. Uh, I will explain more on this uh, example. So this example is a little bit different with this uh, simple pitot tube because we do have a pitot static prop in the same uh, in one uh, in one uh, prop, okay? To uh, point to measure eh, impact hole to measure the static and the stagnation pressure is in the same prop. So how to calculate? So now. Uh, this question asks us about the uh, air velocity. So this is point number two and this is point number one. Point number one will measure the static uh, stagnation pressure and point number two will measure static pressure. Okay. So as we can see here, this will have P2. We will have P2. And then at this point, same level, we will have P. One. Oops, sorry, not P1. So P1 will be here. So it will push this and it goes up. So P2 is here. Okay, now what we have to do is we have to calculate the pressure here. So by using a chapter 2. Combine the chapter 2 and chapter uh, 5. You know, chapter 6. Okay, chapter 2 and chapter 6. So now we have this manometer. So I put it here at the same level A and B. What we have to find is P1 and P2. So PA is equal to PB. So our PA is equivalent to P2. Plus rho g, rho manometer g, uh, 7.3. Okay. That is number one. Ah. Okay. PA. What about PB? So PB is equal to P1. So substitute this two into this. Okay. So P1 equal to P2 plus rho manometry G7.3 times 10 to the power of minus 2. Now from this equation, okay, P1 is P stagnation, P2 is P static. Take a look at this equation. We know that the P stagnation is P static plus P dynamic. Okay, we know that P stagnation is P static plus P dynamic rho u squared over 2. Okay, this is from the previous equation. Okay, so I changed the color of this pen both because. Okay. So we know that P okay, P stagnation equal to P static plus rho u squared over two. 
Okay, rho u squared over 2. Am I right? Okay. Yes, that is dynamic pressure lah. Now, compared with this figure, our P stagnation is P1. Our P static is P2. So, P stagnation kamu, your P stagnation is P1 equal to P stagnation, P static is P2 plus rho u squared over 2. This velocity is represent the velocity of air. Okay, this. This comes from the Bernoulli's equation. Okay. So, velocity here is velocity for air. So, combine this. We know that P stagnation is P static plus rho u squared over 2 or P1 equal to P2 plus rho u squared over 2. Now, take a look at here. So, we have P1, right? So, substitute this equation into this. So, we will have P2 plus rho u squared over 2 equal to P2 plus rho manometric over 2, I'm sorry, rho manometric times with G times with 7.3 times 10 to the power of minus 2. Okay, so we have P2 and P2 here, you can cancel out. So rho u squared over 2 equal to rho manometric G 7.3 times 10 to the power of minus 2. So now rearrange takes u equal to what? So u is rearrange, eh? u is equal to what? That equation. You have to get that equation. Okay. So I have to raise this first. Wait. Okay, now your equation is u square equal to 2 rho manometric g 7.3 times 10 to the power of minus 2. Okay, divide by rho. So your u is set 2 rho manometric over rho g 7.3 times 10 to the power of minus 2. This is the equation to find what is the velocity of air. Okay, so please substitute the values and give and try to find what is the velocity of air. Okay, that's all for the chapter 6 and thank you.